Eric lifted Mr. Loud into the air as Loud insulted him. All the people there were terrified to see Mr. Loud being owned by a newbie hunter. A muscular man appeared to be admiring Eric, and he approached Eric while the tussle between Eric and Loud continued. Loud addressed the muscular man as Buckman, and Eric also turned toward him with a curious look on his face. Loud, still in the situation where he was completely owned by a newbie hunter, told Mr. Buckman that he was training the newbie, Eric. Buckman reconfirmed with Eric if his name was indeed Eric. Buckman further clarified that if Eric damaged the guild, he would have to fight all of them. Eric had no intention of getting kicked out of the guild, so he instantly stated that he didn't want to fight anyone present there. Loud threatened Eric, saying that if he didn't take Rick in, then nobody present in that guild would accept a level 5 into their group. Loud further asked Eric if he thought he could do anything on his own with his current level. Eric reconsidered his situation upon hearing Mr. Loud's words. Eric found Mr. Loud to be right, as he was almost out of money because of the registration fee, and he couldn't do anything with his current level. Buckman stepped in and stated that Eric was a good boy and leveling up would be a breeze for him. Buckman added that he had been looking for muscles like Eric's and asked if he would join their hunting party. Buckman noted that Eric's muscles hadn't developed overnight, and the only reason his level was low was due to his lack of experience. Eric learned that Mr. Buckman was a human at level 25. Eric, after getting involved with the people in Latna, realized that as he was not from the world of Latna, he gained experience much faster than the native Latnians. He was certain that he wouldn't be able to stay with a single party for very long. With the saying, when you are plummeting from the sky, it doesn't hurt to put on a helmet in his mind, Eric agreed to join Buckman's party, even though he was certain that he wouldn't stay in that party for long. Anpras City experienced rapid growth due to the presence of dungeons and monsters in the surrounding area. The commerce of Anpras primarily revolves around the hunters who venture out to hunt these monsters in the region. Anpras City manufactures products using the materials obtained from the monsters brought back by these hunters. The Epen Plains Dungeons and the Entrance Sot Forest are the two primary areas that sustain Anpras City. There is a small village located next to the Sot Forest, but the monsters seldom leave the forest, so subjugation missions are relatively uncommon. However, a large number of monsters have recently appeared near the village adjacent to Sot Forest, prompting many hunters to investigate and subdue the threat. Among these monsters is the Devoke, a low-class creature native to the Sot Forest. Devokes, though slow, possess a formidable grip capable of breaking stones, and they rely on their size and strength for attack. Despite being a low-class monster, Mr. Buckman takes his time dealing with Devokes. Buckman is a level 25 swordsman and stands as the strongest shield in Anpras. However, a Devoke suddenly launches an attack on Mr. Buckman while he is momentarily distracted, causing him to feel careless for being hit by such a seemingly insignificant attack. Buckman and his hunting party engage the monsters fiercely. Even though Devokes are considered low-class monsters, the hunting party takes a bit of time to eliminate them all. Amber Barnett, a level 21 spearman in Buckman's party's dedicated attacker teases Mr. Buckman, suggesting he should consider retiring as a hunter if he's struggling against a Devoke. Mr. Buckman chuckles and remarks that retirement isn't entirely a bad idea. Amber points out a wound on Mr. Buckman's shoulder and urges him to get it treated promptly. Buckman dismisses the wound as inconsequential, instructing the rest of the party members not to worry about him. Amber blushes and retorts that she isn't concerned about him. Just as Amber and Buckman are about to kiss, another member of the hunting party, Erwin Rupel, a level 16 healer and also Buckman's little sister, interrupts without any regard for privacy, inquiring about Buckman's well-being. Erwin flexes his biceps, claiming he can endure the whole day with muscles like his. Amber scolds him, calling him an idiot, and urges him to stay safe. Erwin continues to talk to Mr. Buckman, emphasizing that he would have been lost without her assistance. Suddenly, a Devoke attacks Erwin from behind. Hubert Crutas, a level 18 mage and the rear support team member of Buckman's party, comes to Erwin's rescue by launching a fire hammer attack on the Devoke. Hubert remarks that it was a close call and that the monster would have harmed Erwin if he hadn't intervened. Buckman's party is a well-balanced team with strong connections, specializing in subjugation missions. They consistently rank at the top of quest competitions and are considered the most reliable team in Anpras. For a beginner hunter, this is the best possible situation. Buckman's party excluded Eric from their battle against the Devokes, considering him merely a beginner at level 5. 
Within the group, Eric served as the pack mule and took on the role of the muscle man for Buckman's party. Eric grew bored because he couldn't join the hunt against the Devokes with Buckman and the others. In Buckman's party, loot was distributed evenly among members, even if they didn't participate in the fight. Eric pointed out that everything was fine within the group except for one issue. One of the monsters in the jungle pointed towards Eric and uttered G Kiku, which translated to that's the guy in Devoke language. The Devoke leader, despite Eric's formidable appearance, judged him solely based on his looks and conveyed to the other Devokes in the Devoke language that it was ludicrous to consider Eric their enemy. The red-colored Devoke, visibly distinct from the others, was the level 25 Lord Devoke. The Lord Devoke warned the other Devokes that he would kill all of them if they were lying to him. However, before he could complete his sentence, Lord Devoke collapsed on the ground, leaving the other Devokes utterly bewildered. From a distance, Eric had noticed Lord Devoke and used his stone bullet or muscle magic attack to effortlessly eliminate the Devoke. Despite defeating the highest level monster present, a guideline appeared in front of Eric, urging him to conquer stronger monsters, as the one he had defeated was of a very low level. Eric felt frustrated that he didn't gain any experience despite defeating the highest rated monster in the area. He planned to approach Buckman and suggest hunting a more formidable monster next time. Erwin waved to Eric, reassuring him that it was safe to proceed and collect the loot. Eric agreed and joined them in the loot collection process. The members of Buckman's party began collecting the loot, which included valuable Devoke hides that could be sold for a good price. As Eric watched his fellow party members extracting loot from the Devoke's body, he was certain that he would have been repulsed if he had witnessed the scene before his kidnapping. However, having carved up so many demon dogs back in the mountains, he no longer felt anything about what he was seeing. Eric quickly gathered the loot, impressing the party members who inquired how he could do it so efficiently. Eric explained that he had been doing this for over 20 years. Erwin asked about Eric's age, and he replied that he was 24 years old. Buckman then inquired about Eric's parents, and Eric revealed that he had been kidnapped 20 years ago, no longer recalling their faces, and returning home was an impossibility. Buckman comforted Eric, assuring him that he didn't need to worry anymore because he was now a part of their family. Eric expressed his gratitude to Buckman for accepting him despite his low level. Buckman explained that he had reached level 25 five years ago. Eric couldn't understand why Buckman had remained at the same level for five years, so he voiced his confusion. Erwin explained that without venturing into a dungeon, there were no high-level monsters left in their current area. Amber further clarified that the highest-level monster in the region was the Lord Devoke, and they didn't need to hunt high-level monsters because what they currently hunted sufficed. She emphasized that they had no plans to enter a dungeon. Eric couldn't believe what he had just heard, so he stood up and headed out to practice his sword skills a bit, stating that he would return soon. Buckman cautioned Eric to take it easy and to avoid going near the Sot Forest, as it was a dangerous place. Buckman and his fellow party members couldn't believe that everyone back at the Guildhouse believed that a nice guy like Eric was an otherworlder. Hubert, expressing concern for Eric's safety, offered to accompany him. Buckman agreed, pointing out the possibility of lingering monsters in the area. Hubert stepped outside the fence to inquire about Eric's progress only to be surprised by Eric's sudden disappearance. Frustrated, Eric dashed through the jungle, unable to believe that not a single monster could provide him with valuable experience points. He meticulously scanned the creatures while traversing the dense foliage but found none worthy of his efforts. Upon reaching Effer's cave, Eric questioned her about her choice of residence in such a perilous location. Effer assured him that there were likely no monsters in the Sot forest stronger than she was. Eric's frustration deepened as Effer confirmed that there were no challenges greater than the one he had already conquered. Realizing the futility of his quest, Eric decided to return to Buckman's party before nightfall. A sudden, powerful blast resonated from the jungle, catching Eric's attention. While it didn't sound as immense as a demon dog's roar, Eric was drawn toward its source. He hurled an entire tree at the unseen creature, only for it to effortlessly deflect the massive projectile. Eric sensed that he was dealing with something far from ordinary. Hopeful that defeating this mysterious entity would boost his level, he hurried to the location but found no trace of the monster, only a naked red-haired man. To his surprise, the man turned out to be none other than Artis, whom he had seen with Mr. Loud at the Onpross Guildhouse. 
As Eric looked at the red-haired naked man, he recalled that this was the mage from Loud's party. He couldn't help but wonder why the man was completely naked, but he quickly dismissed the question, deciding that he didn't care about the man's attire. Eric wondered where the monster had gone since he was certain that the noise had come from that direction. Wanting to escape the awkward moment, Eric began apologizing to Artis, planning to make a swift exit. However, Artis stopped Eric and voiced his suspicions. Eric, with a frustrated expression on his face, remained silent but mentally referred to Artis as a nudist, finding it odd for someone to be alone and naked in the midst of such a dense forest. Artis continued, pointing out that a level 5 hunter should not be deep within the dangerous forest. Eric added another sarcastic remark to his mental list, stating that the area was not a public bath since Artis was still standing naked in front of him. Eric appeared desperate to find a monster that could genuinely increase his level and informed Artis that he had simply been passing by when he heard a loud noise. He had thought there might be a big monster, which led him to investigate. Eric mentioned that he needed to leave as his party was probably waiting for him. Artis, the mage, took action by creating a ring of fire around Eric, demanding that he stop and tell the truth. Artis asked Eric if he had seen the monster. Eric, exuding a terrifying aura, quickly grabbed Artis's weapon just as Artis was about to proceed with his threats. With a stern expression, Eric told Artis that he didn't understand why Artis was doing this, but he genuinely hadn't seen the monster yet. Eric then questioned Artis about his behavior, pointing out that Artis and Loud seemed to act alike at times. Eric further inquired why Artis was looking down on people with lower levels. Artis was caught off guard by the question and hesitated to answer. Eventually, he apologized and explained that he had simply gotten too excited. However, the situation took a surprising turn as Mr. Loud arrived on the scene and couldn't believe what he was witnessing. From Mr. Loud's perspective, as he perceived Artis as a lady, it seemed like Artis and Eric were engaged in intimate moments. Loud addressed Eric by his level, shouting furiously that Eric had finally revealed his true nature. Eric still had a grip on Artis's hand at that moment, which added to the confusion. Artis asked Eric to release his hand as he was hurting his wrist. Loud continued, expressing his anger about how Eric had embarrassed him in front of Miss Sagire and was now defiling a lady at his party. Eric was perplexed by Mr. Loud's words, as he saw no lady there besides those three men. Artis attempted to defuse the situation by suggesting there might have been a misunderstanding and advising Eric to run away. Artis commented that Loud was quite strong, even among sword mages, and that Mr. Loud's pose indicated he was preparing to unleash a technique. Loud told Eric that it was insolent of him to do what he had done in front of him and that he could not forgive him. Eric turned to Artis and asked if he was implying that Loud was about to use a skill with that embarrassing pose. Artis confirmed that it was indeed a drawback of being a sword mage and warned Eric that Loud was serious when he struck that pose. Loud then gave Eric the opportunity for final words, inviting him to speak the name of the enemy who would fall by his blades. Eric, concerned about Artis's nudity, urged him to put on his clothes, to which Artis apologized, admitting he had forgotten to dress earlier. Loud couldn't believe Artis was willingly engaging with Eric, and he cursed Eric while declaring his intention to show him the difference between their levels. With full force, Loud charged toward Eric. In an attempt to defuse the situation, Eric decided to bow down and apologize, simultaneously dodging Loud's attack. Loud's strike missed its target, causing a massive explosion. Eric returned to the camp where the Buckman party was waiting for him. Buckman approached Eric and assured him that he had heard about what happened from Artis, emphasizing that it wasn't Eric's fault, a sentiment shared by everyone present. Eric acknowledged that he understood, but the pain of the incident was not easily forgotten. Buckman suggested waiting for the results before drawing any conclusions. The door creaked open, and Irwin emerged from it. Eric inquired about Loud's condition, and Irwin informed him that Loud's life wasn't in danger, thanks to Eric bringing him back promptly. Buckman tried to comfort Irwin, assuring her that she had done all she could. Eric called for Mr. Loud, but the atmosphere was tense, and blame for the accident may have fallen on Loud himself. Eric recognized the pain Loud was going through and understood that it was impossible to comfort him. The next morning, Artis accompanied Loud back to Unpros City. It was said that after Loud learned that Artis was a man, he could no longer face him. As for the monster that had created the loud noise in the forest, it was never found. After spending three months with the Buckman party, Eric soon forgot about that elusive creature. The Buckman party had set up camp on the outskirts of the Sot Forest. 
Irwin was in disbelief over what she had just heard. Buckman explained that he had heard Mr. Loud was attempting to clear the forest by himself. Eric called out to Amber, expressing his concern and stating that it sounded serious. Amber agreed, emphasizing that for someone at Mr. Loud's level, venturing into a dungeon alone was akin to suicide. Eric asked if he had misunderstood Mr. Loud's level, to which Amber clarified that while Mr. Loud's level was high enough to raid dungeons alone, he was primarily accustomed to fighting monsters in the Onpras area, mainly indigenous creatures that were hunted for survival. This meant that their leveling up was gradual, and high-level monsters were typically rare in their region. Eric concurred, mentioning his encounters with Ephor and Lord Devoke, both of whom were relatively high in level but not excessively so. He then asked Amber about the difference between indigenous monsters and dungeon monsters. Amber explained that monsters in dungeons were not native to their world. They appeared inside dungeons created by the evil god Omphalos, where it was not uncommon to find newborn monsters starting at level 30. She added that there were rumors of monsters with even higher levels in dungeons. Eric considered the potential for leveling up by facing these high-level monsters and secretly contemplated venturing into a dungeon. However, Buckman cautioned that while the monsters were one thing, many other worlders secretly went hunting there. Eric recalled Buckman mentioning that finding dungeon entrances could be challenging and decided to abandon the idea. Curious, Eric asked Buckman if he knew why Mr. Loud had gone to the dungeon despite its dangers. Buckman speculated that Mr. Loud had likely ventured into the dungeon in search of a healing artifact. Eric asked for clarification about what an artifact was, and Buckman explained that since they were not originally from their world, dungeons must be connected to Latna by mediums known as artifacts. These artifacts possessed unique abilities and came in various forms and sizes. Buckman also mentioned a rumor that one of these artifacts had the power to heal any wound, suspecting that Loud might have entered the dungeon in pursuit of it. Buckman added that there had been a recent increase in monsters venturing out from the Sot forest, and he expressed hope that it wasn't a bad omen. Eric considered dungeons and artifacts as mere pipe dreams and returned to his original obsession, the monster he had initially encountered when he stumbled upon Artis naked in the forest. Despite having been in the Sot forest numerous times, Eric still found it spooky, but he was determined to find the creature he had glimpsed three months ago, believing it would be worthwhile if it was as large as it sounded. Eric recalled that Effer lived in the area and planned to ask her about the mysterious monster. However, as he ventured out into the Sot forest late at night, he collided with someone. Unaware of the presence of the monster, Eric yawned and tried to recall Effer's location. It wasn't until he fully opened his eyes after yawning that he saw the monster right in front of his face. A yellow guideline pop-up appeared in front of Eric, revealing the monster to be named Tatiro, with a level of 31. Tatiro was encased in a hard carapace, resistant to sword strikes and physical blows, but vulnerable to magic. It was also known to typically reside in dungeons. Eric wondered why a dungeon monster was outside of its usual habitat. After reading about the monster's capabilities, he concluded that it was not compatible with his class. One of the monsters exclaimed, human, and another referred to Eric as meat. In response, Eric drew his sword, and the monsters questioned if he was a mage. Another monster dismissed Eric, calling him a useless knife holder, while the others declared that the knife was useless and charged toward Eric. With raw strength, Eric slashed one of the monsters, cutting it in half. He expressed frustration with the guideline, which seemed as useless as ever to him. The surviving monsters couldn't understand how Eric had managed to defeat one of them. One monster claimed that Eric's sword was a magic sword, but another disagreed, stating that it was just a normal knife and that the slain monster had been the least intelligent among them. They believed that they should eat the person carrying the knife. Eric easily dispatched another monster, causing it to panic and suggest that they should run toward the dungeon for safety. Eric caught up to the monster and asked where it was going, to which the monster replied that it needed to hurry. Following the dungeon monsters, Eric eventually reached the gates of the dungeon. Curious, he asked the monster what it was. A yellow guideline popped up in front of Eric, alerting him to the detection of spatial transportation magic. The guideline indicated that the portal's destination was the Eden Plain Dungeon. Eric wondered why the portal connected to the dungeon was in that location. Eric finally understood why the monsters had been appearing near the villages in the area. These monsters were emerging around the village because the dungeon monsters were coming out of the newly discovered portal. 
Eric expressed his astonishment, stating that he had never heard of portals to dungeons appearing out of nowhere. Turning to the monster, he inquired if those creatures were responsible for creating the portal. The monster hesitated and replied that it didn't know, emphasizing that monsters didn't use magic. Eric suspected that the monster was lying and cross-examined it, asking if it didn't know who had created the dungeon portals. He threatened the monster, initially intending to let it off easily, but now planning to destroy the portal. However, the monster stopped Eric from destroying the portal and revealed that it had received strict orders not to allow anyone to enter through it. Eric admitted that he didn't know who he was, but he had decided to enter the dungeon himself. He instructed the monster to pretend it hadn't seen anything and to stay there to ensure that no one else entered the dungeons. Eric was determined not to get caught while entering the dungeon, and he explained that by guarding the gates, the person who had ordered the monsters would also remain unaware of his intrusion. The monster found Eric's plan fascinating and asked if it would really work. Eric confidently entered the dungeon, and the monster agreed that by continuing to guard the gates, it would keep suspicions at bay for the one who had given it orders. Inside the dungeon, two individuals were engaged in battle against the monsters. The red-haired man turned to the pink-haired girl, addressing her as Alicia, and encouraged her to hold on. He punched one of the monsters and ordered it to stay back before charging toward the creature that was tormenting Alicia. Frustration welled up within him as he realized that his axe strikes weren't having any effect on the monsters. He wondered if magic was the only way to defeat them. Meanwhile, Alicia was still being tormented by the monsters. She began chanting prayers and unleashed a blinding flash of magic, inadvertently catching the red-haired man in the burst of light. Despite the blurriness in one of his eyes, the red-haired man pressed on. Another person approached from behind him, and he addressed the newcomer as Renard, requesting that Renard cast a healing spell. However, Renard didn't respond to the red-haired man's orders, having already been incapacitated by the monsters. The monsters focused their efforts on trying to kill Alicia, recognizing her as a mage who could pose a threat in the long run. Desperate and outnumbered, the red-haired man cried out for help, repeatedly calling for someone to save them from the monsters. Amidst the chaos, a slicing sound echoed through the area as someone seemed to be attacking the monsters. To their amazement, the red-haired man witnessed a single strike slicing through Tatiro, one of the monsters. He noted that Tatiro had a tendency to raise its forelimbs to protect its head, and the narrow gap in its carapace at the neck made it challenging to cut. Analyzing the attacker's technique, the red-haired man realized that the person had initially targeted Tatiro's groin, causing the creature to lower its arms and expose its vulnerable neck, making it much easier to deliver a decisive blow. The technique the person used could only be employed by sword mages wielding two swords. The person in question was none other than Mr. Loud. Loud asked the red-haired guy and Alicia if they were from the Onpros Hunters Guild. The person screamed Mr. Loud's name. Loud asked the red-haired guy if he knew him. The red-haired guy responded that he obviously knew Mr. Loud. He also added that he had heard Mr. Loud suddenly decided to explore a dungeon by himself a few months ago and told Mr. Loud that he was really amazing. Loud clarified that it was not the case, he had been lost in that dungeon for the past 70 days. He explained that after he returned from Buckman's camps, he remembered drinking at the guild, but when he woke up, he was in the dungeon. In reality, Mr. Loud did not enter the dungeon by choice, and he had not seen anyone. Since he could not find a way out, he was lost inside the dungeon. The red-haired guy asked Mr. Loud why he had come to the dungeon alone. Loud answered that it was just fate that had led him there. Even though Mr. Loud pretended to know everything about the dungeon, he seemed happy that he could get out of the dungeon, as he had met two skilled warriors. Elisha told Mr. Loud that she had heard he was there looking for a healing artifact. Loud didn't actually believe in the existence of artifacts, so he wondered what a healing artifact was and if they existed. Loud, looking toward Elisha's injury, asked her if she was injured. Elisha answered that she had managed to stop the bleeding and that she would be fine. The red-haired guy said that they didn't need to worry, as they had some potion. Looking at the potion Mr. Loud had given to Alicia, the red-haired guy mentioned that it was a high potion, which was a very rare potion. Elisha asked Mr. Loud if he was doing those things for her just because she was a woman. Loud replied that he wasn't doing it solely because she was a woman. Elisha then inquired why he had used such a high potion on her. Loud explained that he had given it to her because the potion wouldn't heal the wound he had, and the potion was only valuable when used. 
Loud, looking toward the lady's injured legs, worried that she might slow them down with that leg injury of hers. Elena assured Mr. Loud that she would pay him back when they got out of that dungeon. Loud made an excuse to leave the dungeon, stating that it would be impossible for them to explore the dungeon with an injury like that, and they should leave. Elisha told Mr. Loud that he had come all that way and asked if he was going to leave because of her, a complete stranger to him. Loud behaved as if he was tired. The red-haired guy asked Loud if he was tired or if something was wrong. Elisha asserted that she was a hunter too and he should not look down on her. Loud told Elisha not to worry, that it was nothing, and they should focus on how they could get out of there quickly. Loud was feeling unwell, and it seemed like he had a problem with his stomach, as he was prone to irritable bowel syndrome. He said that he wouldn't last much longer either. The red-haired guy seemed completely impressed by Mr. Loud, as from his perspective, Mr. Loud had stopped to help strangers like them even though he had such a severe injury that couldn't be healed even by a high potion. The dungeon began to rumble, and something crashed inside the dungeon. The red-haired guy asked if it was an earthquake. Elisha explained that dungeons are in a different dimension, so they don't experience earthquakes. The red-haired guy then asked if it was noise from the monsters. Loud maintained a battle-ready position and told both of them to run away from there as quickly as possible. He added that he couldn't soil his pants now in front of that woman. Loud shouted again and asked them if they hadn't heard that. The lady told Mr. Loud that he couldn't take on that many monsters by himself. Loud clarified that the monster was coming out. The red-haired guy grabbed Elisha and dashed away from there. Elisha asked the red-haired guy what he was doing. He explained that they would only get in Sir Loud's way, and they couldn't let his last sacrifice be in vain. Loud said that he didn't mean for the red-haired guy to run too. He looked helpless and wondered if he had been in the dungeon for so long that he should have leveled up a little. Loud was certain that he could handle a few Tatiros only. However, a horde of Tatiros containing at least 100 of them were flocking out of the chamber. Loud dashed out of there upon seeing that many Tatiros. The Tatiros didn't even seem to care that Mr. Loud was there, they were running away from something, chanting the words run away and danger repeatedly. Loud wondered what could have possibly happened to cause the Tatiros to be so frantic. The entry of the portal in the dungeon appeared chaotic, with a multitude of dead Tatiros and their body parts strewn about. It was none other than Eric who was responsible for slaying the Tatiros. Slaying the Tatiros was a piece of cake for him. Eric remarked that he had gotten his hopes up because it was a dungeon, but the Tatiros weren't even strong enough to be called high level. He explained that he couldn't use all his strength because he was afraid the tunnel would collapse. Eric also mentioned how difficult it had been for him to hide his strength while with Buckman. The Tatiro's boss scolded the other Tatiros for not following his orders to run away. One of the ordinary Tatiros warned the boss that a person who used magic but was carrying a fake sword was approaching, while another Tatiro commented that they were stupid but also brave. The Tatiro boss told Eric that he was a monster and wouldn't get past him. However, Eric quickly obliterated the Tatiro boss with a single slash, frustrating him as he didn't gain any experience. Unable to find any more Tatiros, Eric reached a room where he discovered a yellow, shiny object. He wondered if it was an artifact, and indeed, it turned out to be one, a fireball bracelet. Eric was excited to have acquired the artifact and questioned why it had been so easy to obtain such a valuable item. Normally, one would have to defeat a boss of some sort to obtain such an item. Eric seemed to completely disregard the Tatiro boss, an impressive 40-level monster, now lying dead on the dungeon floor. Eric tried to remember the artifact's properties, recalling that if he removed it, the monsters would all disappear. However, one of the drawbacks was that he wouldn't be able to level up anymore. Still, the Tatiros wouldn't pose a threat to people outside of the dungeon, and there was still a final boss and the main dungeon core artifact to conquer, allowing him to continue leveling up. The artifact's description indicated that the wearer could shoot fireballs by shouting fireball, and it could be used a total of 30 times. Eric placed the artifact in his hand, assuming the posture of shooting a fireball and preparing himself. After confirming that no one else was present, he readied himself to shout fireball and fulfill every man's fantasy of a lifetime. What lies ahead for them as they venture into this mystical world? What do you think will happen next? Don't forget to hit the like button, comment if you want to continue this series and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.